Hey everyone, we are back with another great interview today. We are going to talk about confidence. And it's interesting as I was preparing for the interview with Lucy Liu, my guest of the day, I did a little research and discovered that 85% of people lack self-esteem. I can only imagine that a lot of you have your hands raised right now that you can relate to that. That it, I was stunned that that was an actual statistics, 85%. And it's a recent statistic and it involves everyone, men, women alike. It's And what I found interesting is that, you know, if you lack self-esteem, you're going to have, a, or potentially most likely have lower self-worth and less confidence. And so today we're going to dive into talking about that. But before we do, I want to give you a few more statistics 85% of women do not believe that they are attractive. That breaks my heart because there is beauty in every single person in this world. 62% of women do not believe they're intelligent. Ladies, you are intelligent. God has given you a brain and you can think. And, you know, I talk so much about mindset and we're going to, we'll mention that a little bit later, but when you have those thoughts that you aren't intelligent, I want you to sit down with a pen and paper and journal around the fact that you are indeed intelligent. You actually have a brain that functions. And if you have a brain that functions, you can write down a list of things that you know you have accomplished in your life that demonstrates that your brain's working just fine and that you do have intelligence. 50% of women do not think they are liked by others. And two thirds of women aren't confident in your ability to do their job. Now, I'm going to just throw in some statistics about men because this is this lack of self-esteem is not only in women. 55% of men don't think they're liked and 60% of men don't believe in their ability to do their job. So I will put the link to the articles, the information, um, the resources that I found in the show notes. So if you guys want to go check that out, you can. But with that in mind, with those dramatic numbers in mind, I'm going to bring on my super great guest today, Lucy Liu, and have her tell us a little bit about herself. Lucy, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me, Robin. I such a pleasure to be here and good to speak to you again. I had Robin on my podcast, The Lucy Liu Show, and we had a blast. So my name is Lucy Liu. I'm a life and confidence coach and podcaster, speaker, author, and I just really passionate about helping women, especially to gain their confidence that cultivate that rock star confidence that you deserve and live the epic life. And not just by surviving, but thriving. And that's what I'm here. And that's why I'm here to talk about confidence. And I cannot agree with you more, Robin, on those statistics, because there is actually a difference between men and women. For example, there was a Google study that studied when women was... Okay, let's start with men. When men is about 60% ready, they go apply for jobs. But when it comes to women, they don't apply for jobs unless they're 100% sure they need every single requirement in, you know, what the employer is looking for. And I believe when that comes to entrepreneurship, oh boy, I feel as women, we don't go for it or we don't go for the next level unless we feel like. 200% sure we're ready, right? And really, we're never truly ready. And ready is a decision. So that's what I speak on. And I'm so glad that you invited me. And I hope if you're listening, blessings are coming. Oh my gosh. Yes. So much, so much. Um, So it, it's interesting, Lucy, that you say that because I see this all the time. People, I mean, of course I work with mostly women and I see this all the time. Well, I'm not ready for that. Don't I need to do this first? Do well, no, I better wait until everything's perfect. Guess what? Everybody just 
actually taking action is so much better than waiting till things are perfect because you will never achieve perfection. And perfectionism is not going to lead us to more confidence either. So Lucy, let's talk about this. I know that you talk a lot about overthinking and your that statistic about women needing to be 100% ready before they'll take action to apply for a job or even start their entrepreneurial journey is an indication that there is definitely a lot of overthinking going on. So let's talk about that and how we can simplify our minds to then be able to become more confident and take action without holding ourselves back because of a lack of self-esteem. Absolutely. I think not only do women overthink, we actually spend a great amount of time thinking about how we're overthinking. I once was talking to a client and she was like, oh my goodness, yesterday I spent two hours sitting there and just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm overthinking things. So not only do we overthink, we actually spend a lot of time thinking about why are we overthinking? You know, what uh, what what's going on that we're overthinking? And then it's a loophole. It's a negative spiral that actually brings no productivity whatsoever, leading to leading not to any desirable result, right? So it's really a cycle that we need to be more aware of. And I believe everything starts with awareness. It's great that you catch yourself in the moment that you're overthinking. But what kind of results do you want? If you want desirable results, what actions do you need to be taking, right? What kind of thoughts do you need to be thinking? Definitely not the overthinking thoughts, right? But what thoughts do you need to be thinking in order to get you to take those necessary actions that will lead you to your desirable results? So we're kind of backwards, engineering it backwards so that you're leading to your desirable results. And that, because so many women, we worry that we seem to be arrogant if we're too confident. We're, we're brought up in society to not be so loud. And that's a myth I want to debunk, right? You can be calm. I am actually a very calm person, but I am confident. You do not have to be a certain way in order to be confident. You don't have to be loud, like putting yourself out there, but you need to know what you stand for and what means what you want your life how it's designed, and you get the say in it. Because people often are shy of showing up for themselves because they don't want to be arrogant. But guess what? It's not bragging when it's the truth. So if it's true that you accomplish something, you're talking about it, you're not bragging. Okay, you're not arrogant, because it's the truth. And as long as there is truth and authenticity, go ahead, talk about it. You're fine. You're showing up for yourself, right? Because there's actually a difference. Confidence is very healthy. It's, it's our self belief in our own abilities, where arrogance is an unhealthy attitude. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I, I love Lucy, so many things that you just said, and I want to point out that our thoughts produce our results. So if we are thinking negative thoughts, we're going to have negative results. And I love how you talk about reverse engineering. So if you have a desire, what are the action steps you can take to get there? We know that the more action we take, the more progress we make, the more momentum we build. And that's really important to notice that we we can become more confident when we start achieving 
results. And we only achieve results by taking action, not by sitting and thinking. So I love that you pointed that out. Now you have a very, you like, I should say, you like to simplify things and you have a three-step process that we can follow to learn how to become more confident. Can we dive into that? Absolutely. Let's keep things simple, right? Because when it's not simple, we get so scattered and scattered action is not desirable action. So my simple steps are just three steps. First, decision. I think everything starts with decision. Being confident is a decision. It's a way of living. Confidence is a muscle you can build. It's a skill you can learn. So it's absolutely a decision when you want to start, what you want to do. These are all decisions and life is made up of decisions and intentions. And these decisions will determine your complete experience. For example, the number one excuse you hear women say is I'm not blank enough, right? But guess what? Again, enough is not an amount. Enough is a decision. So everything right there starts with the first step is making a true, determined, unshakable decision that this is what I'm going to do. I love that. This is what I'm going to do. And indecision is, is a decision. So if you're choosing to sit in a place of indecision, that is your, I guess, should we say motivator? to stop, to actually take action and change those thoughts around that decision and make a final decision because you don't want to sit in a place of indecision because then you're going to be scattered and you're not going to be productive. Exactly. I I can't agree with you more. Indecision is also a decision. So therefore we're making that decision anyway. So even Mm -hmm. if you don't move forward, you've already made that decision. So why not make that a positive one? Right. Love it. Love it. And step two is really just to manifest it. Visionize, uh, visualize, know exactly where you want to be. Know your next steps. And I think the biggest mistake women make is that you're at point A and then you're looking at that daunting point Z as in zebra. So you're manifesting this humongous thing at the end of the journey and it becomes so scary but it's really easy if you chunk it down and then we just go from point a to point b that's all we're going to look at we're going to manifest that point b first and then third step is just to take immediate speedy action because success loves speed Success loves speed. It's the truth. So yes, 100%. And if we're sitting in a place of indecision, we're not going to have speed. Therefore, we this is like a complete circle, right? We just closed that loop. So I do have to say, so I, I know that the listeners know that I'm not a big believer in manifesting. But I think what Lucy's saying is that in, we can, if you have a vision of where you want to take your future, if you have a desire for yourself, for your life, for your business, and you sit and you make the decision to take action, you are going to move yourself from point A to point B, and B is going to take you to C, C to D, and you're going to ultimately get to Z. But it's important to break that down into those finite steps, one decision at a time to move yourself forward. You don't have to, and I think it gets very overwhelming when you look at the entire big picture. And I'm gonna link uh, uh, the show notes for, in the episode for the interview I did with Stacey Tushel because we talked a lot about then about breaking down those goals. So, you know, you may have a big goal, but how can you break that down into little steps? smaller goals that are going to help you get there. So it, again, it's looping back to that one decision at a time, visualizing where you want to go, and then mapping out the steps you have to take to get there. So Lucy, that 
three simple steps. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love to keep things simple, simplified. Um, do you have anything else that you want to add to that to help people make that decision to move forward? Like, is there, and, and I'm going to, to say that if you are struggling with thoughts and you are stuck in a place of indecision, get out your pen and paper and journal. Every single thought you have is going to produce a result. So if it's a negative thought and it's a thought, if you're sitting in a decision because you can't change your thought pattern, write it down, write that negative thought down. And then next to it, write the positive thought, do that over and over and ultimately that thought will change. You will change your mind in terms of what you're thinking. And that's how you move forward if you're stuck in that place of indecision. So Lucy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Anything else you want to add? Beautifully said. Pen to paper is therapeutic. It's essential to our well-being. I want to add that so many times we don't reach those goals it's because we're not having fun. So it's really essential that you ask yourself in the process of taking these actions, how can you make it more fun, right? For example, Robin and I, we both have a podcast. How is it that we're going to produce, to launch, produce, and continue and make sure it past hundreds of episodes? I don't know about you, Robin. I am having so much fun, right? See, yes. Robin's not nodding, nodding because it's so true. We're having so much fun. It fills our own mind when we're talking to amazing guests, right? So it's, we're having fun. So this action of what we're taking is fun. It's fuel for our own life. So whatever you're doing in your life and business should be really fun and fuel your day to day. Because if we're having fun today, tomorrow, this month, guess what? That's, that makes up your life, right? So if you're not having fun in your business, you're not having fun with what you're doing, it, it might really be time to reflect. Are you doing the right thing? Or how can you make it more fun? Oh, I love that. I love that. Because when you're when you're having fun, you're going to have more positive thoughts and you're going to take more positive action to get better results. And you're going to have more joy in your heart at the same time. So I love that. I love how you put that, that spin on having fun in addition to making decisions, taking action and getting to the, the ultimate goal of being more confident in your business, your life and, and everything you do, even your relationships. Absolutely. And being confident, you absolutely believe in your abilities to complete your work and achieve your goals. And even if you're not there yet, you will constantly do new, challenging, and difficult things until you get there and do it well. So it's really about those actions that you're going to be taking and your mindset. You are worthy. You're worthy of the luxury of being confident because it's, it's your choice. You deserve confidence. You just keep shining, dear. And if you're listening, if you get if you feel inspired by anything Robin says on her podcast, right? If those all take practice, she is exercising her confident muscles daily with her routine, with her habits, and with her amazing promises that she kept to herself. And that's the best way to do it is to is to keep promises that we promise ourselves that's building those muscles building those muscles and don't worry if your confidence ever gets crushed because the more you get crushed the more times you get back up again those muscles are worked out even better and that's that's where i came from right i had a lifetime limiting belief of having the same name as a celebrity 
it used to be my biggest, biggest hindrance. I, you know, someone out there is already having the same name, Lucy Lou. I'm just going to be nobody because there will never, ever be another Julia Roberts. It's just not possible. So I'm nobody, right? It's all our heads and it's all in our heads. And living in Los Angeles, I used to not even being able to make restaurant reservations in my own name. I used to make it in my mom, my, my mom's name because I felt like I, I didn't want to make a, a big fuss. Like the everyone would be like, are you the Lucy Lou? Are you the Lucy Lou? Are you coming into our restaurant? Right. So I had this really big problem with my name. And you know, if you're listening, it could be anything. It could be anything. Your name's too long. Your name's too short, too hard to pronounce, too, you know, hard to spell. It, we just give ourselves so much problems. And guess what? I turn that hindrance into my asset. And if anything is stopping you from reaching your goals, Think about how you can turn those hindrances into assets because they absolutely can. Mm, I love that. Lucy, I love your story. And I love how we can encourage and inspire other people to do exactly what we've done, to put one foot in front of the other, change those negative skeptical thoughts and put them into perspective. Almost like making... um like instead of looking at something as an obstacle, look at it as an opportunity. And I think that is, there's another episode that I did on that very topic. And I will actually link that in the show notes as well. Lucy, where can the listeners find you and connect with come, you, learn more from you? Yes. Come check out my podcast, the Lucy Lou show. It's L-U-C-Y-L-I-U. It's a weekly short fueling station for your mind, business, and life. And I'm at lucylucoaching.com. I'm very active on social and have the same handle everywhere at M-S-L-U-C-Y-L-I-U. That's Miss Lucy Lou. And Miss Lucy Lou, I will put all of your links in the show notes so that everyone listening can easily reach you and follow you and connect with you. Listeners, thank you so much for being here. If you know anyone else who might be struggling with low self-esteem, struggling with confidence, not taking action because they are afraid, because they don't think that they're worthy or capable, share this episode with them. Let's spread the love and create that ripple effect of good out in the world so that more people can find success, joy, happiness, all the things that will make the world a better place to be. Have a great day and I will see you guys next time.